Logos suck to design. You know it, I know it, but I have spent hours trying to figure out the best way to create the specific logo you're trying to make. So let's dive into this. We're going to be in my personal mid journey server. I'm going to go ahead and hide this right here. Bam, there we go. You are now inside my personal mid journey server. So you can see we started very simplistic emblem logo, simplistic, flattened, vector art. Now there's a few things in this that I want you to know right off the bat no text adding this right here dash dash no text to the end of your string is a must when you're trying to create logos any wording we want to put in i'm going to show you a background removal and alter tool that's completely free but we just want to get the base logo down now anytime you are making it or making a logo rather there's a few things that you want to use no text of course being one of them but just pay attention as we go because we're going to go through a lot of these prompts talking about them and i'm also going to give you about a hundred different stylizations you can use in your logos to get the exact desired look all you got to do for me is hit the logo down below that's a little thumbs up make it turn blue hit the like button help me out and help the algorithm find this awesome content. So we're starting with flat logo design sports car. You're gonna notice that flat logo or the word flat or the word flattened is gonna show up in each and every single one of these. Something that is flat, unless you're trying to create a mascot is the way to go. And you're gonna see why as we progress. So we started with flat logo design sports car, cartoon realism is gonna be our stylized and then vector and style of Pablo Picasso Picasso. So this is something that you should mess around with and in link one down below is going to be this massive list of the most famous artists in the world and their artistic medium. So here we have uh, Sandro Botticelli and you can see his style. We have Da Vinci and his style. We have uh, Durer right here. So whenever you're wanting to use or mimic a style of some public domain artist like in that list in link number one down below in the description just add style of to the end of it and I gave two examples here you can see style of Pablo Picasso right here that kind of painterly style and then we get the style of Banksy almost like a trash polka feel so this is just the same exact prompt flat logo design sports car cartoon realism vector with no text in mid journey v5 but just changing the style of now you can see that I have it set up in remix mode so if I only want to change one thing I don't want to have to retype my entire prompt so you can do that by going and typing slash prefer remix and that will turn remix on for you and this is exactly what it does we cover this more in depth in my master mid journey course which is also on the channel whenever we hit variations we now get this so all I have to do is change the style and then when I hit submit, it'll start generating the exact same prompt just with my minor or minute rather change. And this is how we go from style of Picasso to style of Banksy very, very fast, very quickly uh, and efficiently using just that. Now, we're also going to talk about mediums and mediums of course would be line drawing or charcoal. So let's actually go down here a little bit and I guess I covered that right after this. So instead, we're gonna talk about shaping your logo. Sorry about that. So we have flat logo design sports car, intricate vector art. So here we just have a vector art logo for a sports car, car company, anything like that could use it. But now we're actually going to add the word circular. And you'll notice that we start getting these circle icons. So adding the shape that you want at the very front of your prompt will help mid journey understand, well, what kind of shape you want, big surprise there. But it is little hints and tips like that that help the front end and back end of your prompt building that really make all the difference. So what happens happens if we change that we take the same prompt but say square flat logo design now you'll notice two of these aren't in a square but unlike the previous and unlike the very first we do actually have some square images generated which we can then make variants of and get a whole set of four based on the one that we actually like so understanding circular square octagonal things like that hexagonal you can actually change the base layer or base design 
of your image, of your generative prompt there. So now let's actually talk about colors, because in the middle of your prompt, you should add the color scheme that you want. This is mainly for brands and branding, but everybody that's making a logo most likely, or more than not, wants it to be in their branding color package. Every brand or business has their color package. In this case, we chose red, green, yellow, aquamarine, because these four are the most uh, poppy, if you will. They pop the most, in my opinion, at least on YouTube. So now let's go ahead and take this. Flat logo design, coffee cup, vector art. Let's say we're doing a coffee shop, and let's go ahead and go down and talk about this. Now you'll notice here's where I messed with Remix a little bit. Let's add different artistic styles. Now this isn't mediums, and this isn't in the style of a specific artist. This is like Art Nouveau. We have contemporary, and we have my favorite, postmodernism. So you can see if you wanna make very slight changes just to the feel or vibe rather of your logo, near or at the end of your prompt, you can add the artistic styles. I don't know why that did that there. You can add the artistic styles and you can see how the coffee cup changes throughout. Honestly, this one on the top right is my favorite. If I needed a logo for anything that had to do with coffee, this would probably be what I would go with. I am just a huge fan of postmodernism. Now, let's get really interesting and talk about mediums, because mediums are one of the things that impact this the most. For this, we're gonna use just a simple diamond. And the prompt we're starting with is a flat logo design diamond, vector art, no text, version five. Now let's go ahead and have some fun and mess around with the mediums. Also in link two, there will be 33 different types of art mediums. This is the best article I found uh, to explain all of the different mediums and giving examples of each one. So let's talk about this in reference to Mid Journey. We can take our flat logo design diamond and add charcoal drawing to get this charcoal drawing effect, which is really cool. My favorite is probably gonna be this top right one, either the top right or the bottom right. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite style is from this video. Now we can go a whole nother angle and take that exact same prompt, but add watercolor painting. Now you'll notice something every once in a while, even though we're putting in the no text prompt at the end of it, we'll get some text, but there's always going to be at least one that doesn't have any. In this case, we just go ahead and say number two, and if we wanted no text, we could just take variation two and remix it. Now the remove tool that I'm going to show you can also be used to remove this text. So if you have a logo that you really, really love, but it just so happens there's some text under it on the side or above it, I'm going to show you how to easily get rid of that and just have your logo in a transparent file completely free. So stick around for that as well. Now on from watercolor painting, we can actually change this and add something like 3D graphics. Now you'll notice instead of starting it with flat or flattened, we added 3D graphics in the middle of it same prompt as this one right here without the flat logo design and you can see this is absolutely outstanding you can also do something like illustration which makes it even more vibrant and even somewhat photorealistic so when you're messing around with your prompts remember beginning middle end and then whatever you want to remove or the version you want to use all right so let's go ahead and find one that has uh, somewhat of a good background here. Let's go ahead and uh, let's take this one right here, which is going to be number three. So let's go ahead and upscale number three. And while we're waiting for that to upscale, we'll go ahead and scroll down. Oh wow, it's already done. So we'll go ahead and save that image. Now another thing, if you don't wanna save it, this works if you copy the image as well. We're gonna go over to remove.bg. This is a completely free tool forever. You never need to make an account or anything. Then we're just gonna control V, what we just copied from Midjourney, and this is going to just very quickly remove it and give us this nice, clean looking logo that we can then download, and this comes with the transparent background. Let's say though that there was some text down here we needed to get rid of. We can go up and click on edit. 
on the top right will go to erase and restore and then the erase this erase will let us get rid of anything we don't want around our logo and we can go very very small and really get in there as well so I hope this tutorial was helpful when it comes to making logos in Midjourney. If you have any questions, leave them in a comment down below. I will try and remain very, very active and responsive as always. And if you want to learn more about AI, consider subscribing to the channel and check out these two videos on your screen now.